Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to be in Romans chapter 6, verse 8. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Romans 6, 8. Now to study this verse, we need to break it down into two parts. The first part is everything before the comma, and the second part is everything after the comma. So we'll start with this first section, which is actually really interesting. Why, you ask? Well, because every single word is important. Did you know that the English language has more words than any other language in the world? It's true. And when we talk, we like to throw in more words than we really need. Think about this. I could write, I am really in need of some food since I'm running low. That's 13 words. And as a sentence, it's completely fine. But if we boil it down to what really matters, and cut out all the excess words, we could just say, I need food. It's simple, short, and every word matters. And the beginning of verse 8 is the same way. So what words seem important right away? Well, Christ definitely seems important. So Jesus is one of our characters, but who else is in this verse? Well, we, but who is we? For that answer, I think we're going to need to go back to two weeks ago. We talked about how Romans was a letter written by Paul to the church in Rome. But the Bible is timeless, so that we means us too, people that have faith in God. So we are in the verse, and Jesus is in the verse. What other word really pops out here? Well, if you're like me, the word died seems like it's probably pretty important too, especially because it says, if we have died. Have is past tense, meaning it already happened, but I haven't died. And neither of you if you're listening to this right now. And I'm about to make it even more confusing, because the verse says, if we have died with Christ. We know Christ died, we talked about it last week, about how he died on the cross. So, is Paul only talking to dead people? But Jesus died 2,000 years ago, how would I die with him? Good question. And that's what makes the word with so important. Imagine I ask you to go with me to the park. That means I want you to go to the park at the same time as me so we can be together. You might go on the swings and I might be on the slide, but you're still with me. But that's not the only way to use the word with. Think about your favorite song. You say that you sing along with a song, but you aren't in the same room with the singer. I mean, if your favorite song is old enough, the singer may not even be alive anymore. In this case, with doesn't mean being in the same place at the same time as someone else. It means doing the same thing. And if we want to do the same thing as Jesus, then Colossians 2.12 says that we can be buried and raised through baptism. Because Jesus didn't die an ordinary death. He died, he was buried in a tomb, and came back from the dead three days later. And when we're baptized, we do something similar. See, Jesus didn't have to die on the cross, but he chose to because he loves us. In the same way, we don't have to choose to die for God, but we do it because we love him. Jesus died so that we could live, and we die so that we can live. But only the human part of Jesus died, and only part of us will die. After we choose to let part of ourselves die, we're submerged in water, which is like being buried. And then we come back out of the water, just like Jesus came out of the tomb. So, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We believe, or we have faith. Interesting how often that idea keeps popping up. We believe that we will also live with him. Now, him in this sentence is still Jesus, so we will live with Jesus, 
And living with him not only means in our lives on earth, but also in heaven. But if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed that after making a big deal about all the words in the first half of the verse being important, I left one out. If we will live with Christ, if we died with him, if we were baptized, which implies that if we are not baptized, we won't live with him. The Bible says that baptism is necessary on our path to God. Think of that path like a bridge. We're on one side and God is on the other. On our own, we'll reach a point that we can't cross. But when we're baptized, Jesus steps in and makes the bridge complete. Because just like Jesus said in John 14, 6, no man comes to the Father except through me. All we have to do is have faith and let Jesus do what he died on the cross to do. You probably know the drill by now, but this week your job is to write these words on your heart. And don't forget to send in your riddles or your jokes today so that you might be featured on a Wednesday night broadcast. Bye!